Hey, good morning or afternoon, evening, wherever you guys are in the world. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to have our uh, 4th of July weekend uh, critique show here. I always love looking at your guys' work, so make sure, and Jared will tell you where to send it. In fact, tell them right now, Jared, just so they can get ready. Yeah, uh, the place that you can go to submit your images is the AYP Club, which I'll be putting a link to in the chat. So just submit your stuff. It's not too late to even join if you're not a part of it already. So you should do that. And he'll pull out those and we'll basically, you know, take a look at your stuff. Meanwhile, if you guys let us know where you are in the chat window, that's always fun and helpful. I love to see where you guys are tuning in from and see how far we are in the whole world here. Uh, Okay, good. So a couple of pieces of news. So one is that we are having a 4th of July sale. You know, if you're not from the United States, it's basically the celebration of the birthday of our country. I mean, you know what it is. So it's a pretty big deal around here. So we're celebrating by giving you guys big discounts on our courses. You can buy any of the courses for $97, and that's a a big healthy discount. That's advancing your photography. You can buy Bob Holmes' course. If you don't have that, you definitely need those two. And then my Secrets to Amazing Photo Composition course, those are all $97 each. You can also get a three-month membership to our AYP Club, where we're right now in the midst of all our projects. You guys can join us every week, and we also have a huge library. So all that's happening right now, okay? So I'd love to see you guys take advantage of that because we don't do that very often, and now's your chance to join in there. Okay, good. So without further ado, if you don't know who I am by now, I'm Mark Silber. I'm an author, educator, photographer in Carmel, California. And I love helping you guys advance your photography. I mean, that's essentially what I've spent the last many years, over a decade, doing, bringing you guys videos, books, and our, you know, classes. Um, One of our good friends is, um, here we go. Let's try to get our (laughs) screen sharing going. There we go. Our good friends at Bay Photo Lab have been a strong supporter of the AYP community and the AYP show. And let's support them, but really it's about you. So what I want you to do is make prints, and there's a lot of ways you can do them. You can make prints out of wood products, as you see here, 20% off. Those are kind of fun. You can, uh, let's move that there, and you can also get 15% off on fine art prints. These are really high quality prints. All their prints are great, but these are fine art. They're taking it to uh, a new level. And those are 15% off. The exposers are cool. Bob Holmes mentioned that he uses them around his studio. They're really fun because you can switch them out, as you can see here. Uh, When I switch back, to my view, you'll see I actually have an exposer. Those are 30% off. Those are cool because you can make big prints and you can hang them on your wall and they kind of float off the wall. And you can get 25% off on your first order no matter what you order. So listen, you guys, do us, yourself, and Bay Photo a favor and head on over and grab a print. Okay. All right. So Let's just dive in here and take a look. Jared, who have we got well, up first? And also before oh, you do that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Jared has to remind me. Be sure to subscribe and enable the bell. And thank you, Jared. And also one thing that really will help us, if you hit the like button, I'm gonna just going to assume you're liking this video. Hit the like button because that helps YouTube tell people that we're on the air and we're we're broadcasting and we're doing our critiquing. And Amy, hello, good to see you from New York. Uh, Always great to see your work, and I hope we see it in here today. Oh, we will. We definitely will be. Okay, good. All right, Jared, should we just dive in here and see what we've got? Okay, who is this? All right, so this is from uh, Sarah. 
Uh, he put in a lot of great images. It was hard to pick just one, but I enjoyed this one. No caption with it, but... Okay. Yeah, man, this is a cool action shot. You've got, uh, you know, this diagonal line of the guy in the Zodiac going across there. You know, with the, the thing about a diagonal line, it's always going to enhance the feeling of motion. And then, you know, these amazing uh, icebergs uh, floating along there and his kind of framing him. I mean, that's a cool action shot. And we have a gull, a little tiny punctuation point with the gull there, which adds to it as well. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I see this as part of a story. This is something that we're developing in the AYP Plus classroom weekly classes over the summer we're actually all working on our stories and you know there's a big 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 difference between a single image and a story that has images connected to it and i do see this as part of a story by itself yeah you know it's an interesting photograph but i think part of a story could be where is this guy going what's he doing why are we even here and we're developing these stories. It doesn't just have to be through your images. It can also be with text. Um, you know, uh, you're, if we put together, for instance, a blurb book or a, a book from Bay Photo, you can always have text in there that that helps your viewer understand why it is that you're following this person and what they're doing, and it just it just builds involvement and intrigue into it. But the, anyway, that's a good. To me, it's a good solid image as part of a story. So good on you. And then let's say hello to a couple more people. Juniper in the south expecting a storm. Okay, I know what that's like. And Bogota, hello, Thomas. And Naveen is in Vancouver. Okay, we're kind of covering the globe here. All right, Jared, who's next? All right. Uh, so since we were talking about AYP projects yeah. and writing, um, uh -huh. Amy uh, with her amazing self-portraits as always. And lately, and if you're in the AYP uh, Plus, then you know that she's been working on some uh, tip tricks, uh, which is like three images, and she's been adding text to her images as well. Yeah. So this is very much a part of her current project that she is working on in AYP plus so you can see from the from the three images and also her text she's she's given you a story here and uh, in, in one sheet she's given you a little story I've lost or given away everything so this is the entry point of the story and that leads you into visually seeing you know very interesting images she's basically these are self portraits but in a very clever way she has really mastered the art of of projecting on her face and showing you know various different angles that sort of thing so she's a, she's been exploring that for some time she's in our AYP plus class as well and uh, you know that's a clever way of using text to kind of add to the edginess of this set of photos because there are I consider them all very edgy um, you know you have to stop and look at what's going on here but that's really what we're trying to do with our images we're trying to pull people in you know we are not in the fast food frame of mind here uh, on AYP fast food photography is what I call social media photography where people are literally just flicking through in a one second wow click you know flip 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 tap 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 you know okay that's fine I do that too but I'd rather have people slow down and take a look which is by the way one of the reasons I really do advise you to make prints because your first point of entry where you should be exhibiting your work is your own home or business your studio wherever you're working out of have your work up there it's really important because we want people to stop and look. That's the beauty of going to a museum, is you're not just flicking by. You're, you're going to stop and something really overwhelms you in a good way or you, know, you get drawn into it essentially. You want to stop and have a look at it. So Amy, thank you for 
for doing that. That actually you caused us to stop and take a look here. Okay, by the way, if you guys have questions or comments, you can throw those into the chat and I'll uh, try to bring those in as we can. Okay, so oh, Juniper, okay, your cat started typing <laughs> in the south, in the south of England. Okay, I thought maybe you're in the south of America. So thanks for clarification. Okay, Jared, who's next? All right, next we've got Mache. Uh, and this one is let me find the caption rest in the shade with a friend yeah interesting Mache. so you know i i see this again as part of a story it could be a standalone but i see this as a you know perhaps telling the story of your dog or the uh, the girl um you know following along um my only comment is I, so my eye, I always look at where does my eye go to begin with? And I go, you know, to the dog. I definitely see uh, right there that bright spot. Fine, that's okay. Then her face is a bit in the shadow. I'd probably open that up a little bit with shadows. Just bring, bring your slider over a little bit to open that up. And I'd probably also bring down the highlight on the back of the dog's head. Just because... You know, you want your viewer's eye to go to the main subject that you're drawing their attention to. And in this case, it's her face and her expression. The fact that she's looking clearly, squarely at the dog. So I'd make those adjustments. And then I would probably get rid of whatever this is on the lawn there. Um, it doesn't add to the story. You could, you know, you can do that in your post processing if you feel like you just don't want to be. I mean, that's a very easy fix in Photoshop or Lightroom. Just get rid of it. If you're a purist and you go, Mark, I never do that, fine. Crop in with your feet. Turn your camera a little bit. Stand over a little bit to your right, which would have been a good idea anyway. And just, yeah, just get more of the, you know, the story with the girl and the dog. But those are my thoughts. Just, you know, make it easier for the viewer's eye to go where you want that, where you want them to see. And that's why we use composition tools and why we even use post-processing because we're really, it's all about how do you tell that story more effectively. Okay, good. So while you're switching, I'm going to, answer Naveen's question here you can go ahead and switch to the next one yep. do you think uh, taking a print out uh, gives a different point of view or perspective compared to seeing your photo in the system or Photoshop absolutely you know listen um, seeing anything digitally changes the image when you put it in print it, it you know if you've gotten a high quality print you're going to get a different feel and it's a much better stronger feel for one thing it's a completed it should be completed by the time you send it off to be printed when you're looking at it through your computer it's you know it's it's still a work in progress until you get it into some form i mean yes of course we're going to share a lot of work digitally or we're going to put it in films we're going to put it on social media but there's a big difference i guarantee if we're looking at any of these prints or any of these photographs that we're seeing now as prints they would look very different much deeper much more sensitivity you're getting light reflections you're getting all these different factors especially when you frame your print it puts a it does exactly what it says it frames it it puts another layer there and it just says okay this is a finished piece of work so i absolutely am very strong about making prints I started as a photographer in the dark room. That's all we did. There was there was no, nothing else you could do. I mean, there are basically two choices. You could you could take slide film and project your images. Okay, fine. I was a black and white photographer. We weren't really projecting black and whites, although that's kind of cool. Or you made prints, and you made prints of all sizes and shapes and books and big prints on the wall, little tiny prints, whatever. And that that also is part of your artistic expression let's not lose sight of that okay let's see what we've got here Interesting all right image. this is our friend robin 
who always does such great nature photographs and he's been experimenting you know as we've encouraged with adding himself in yeah uh and then he also has been using he used his usual setup of a canon d10 with a 50 millimeter lens um, which is relatively tight on a 1.6 sensor uh -huh. so he's experimenting with multiple exposures and using lightroom to photo merge them uh -huh. so that he can achieve shots with a wider angle so this is a combination of six different images Oh, wow. Okay, interesting. So, yeah, I applaud you for bringing you or any person into the frame. And, uh, you know, if you haven't heard me talk about this, I'm more and more, I'm, you know, I'm interested in, personally, I feel like we have more affinity with people and, and dogs and animals and birds than just uh, landscape. That's just me. Uh, so, listen, good on, on getting into the frame. Visually, you know, listen, I do not follow or subscribe to the rule of thirds, but there are times where it actually does help in your composition. I, I would move you over to the right just to clear a little more. Yeah, I would just move you over there just to get a little more clearance. Um, if you have a composite and you can do that, why not? I, I don't, I, for some reason, dead center, it's just competing with the rocks behind it. I would find that space, yeah, there's a little more like the lighter space over there might work. Just try that out. I'd just be interested to see what happens. Since you are making a composite, you can do that relatively easily. And, uh, you know, the dark sky, you've done a good job at, at burning the edges here, so that's good. And, uh, you know, it's 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 a great landscape so i would that would be my only suggestion just try that out and see what happens and uh fun little note he also threw in a photo this is the tripod that he used you know rather than lugging up a full tripod okay so you put that on the ground okay interesting yep. robin okay probably on a rock or something definitely I'm definitely so. helps yeah carrying a, a big heavy tripod around a shock asks, where can we submit images? Jared, maybe just give yep. him a hand. Uh, I'll just put that in again. Uh, you can join the AYP Club on Facebook. I just put it in the chat yeah, right it's, now. It's free. Uh, it doesn't cost uh, you and you anything. can submit it there. Yep, it's free. And I've already been accepting people who have requested to join even since we started. So uh, be sure to check that out. All right. Uh, All right. Okay, cool. Aha. Uh -huh. This is from Lucian, uh, who I know is over somewhere in the UK. And uh, I believe that the caption with this one was, uh, you know, minimalism, that he was going for a very minimalist photo. Yeah, tons of negative space here. You know, basically, we're, she we're seeing the sheep. Now, th here's a perfect example of what really would look much better as a print. Um, just because I, if I saw that as a bigger print, I, I had to look closely at the sheep to see what, where his head was facing. Now I see it. But um, it is minimalism, and it's also just it's, it's telling a little story, you know, the sheep walking across this grassy area. Now, what is going on with the background? Is that a reflection maybe through glass? I think that's clouds, just very wispy clouds, oh, I think. I see. Okay. Yeah, very cool negative space. You know, what's the story here? It's a simple line, sheep walking across. Very simple, very straightforward. It does tell an in, you know an interesting story, and the black and white really helps. So good on you. Okay. All right, here's one that was just submitted uh, recently. I am a big fan of black and white. And I will mention this right now, oh. just so you guys you can save the date. Uh, I'm going to be doing a workshop in August. I mean, you can remember this ahead of time. <laughs> I'm giving you ample warning here. August 6, 26th, it's a Thursday, and it'll be right after our YouTube live class. You'll hear more about it. August 26th, I'm doing a webinar for... Uh, DxO Labs, who makes Silver Effects Pro, which to me is the best editing software to convert from color to black and white. So 
mark that on your calendar and tune in. Meantime, you can download a free copy of that too. I, I've been using that for years. It's in my book, Advancing Your Photography. Okay, good. So who's next? Uh, next is uh, El Benhe. I think that's how you say it. Uh, but this is, uh, this is the Copper Canyon in Mexico, where I had a wonderful time recently. Choices for composition were scarce. This place is where I had access to. I'd appreciate your thoughts on the editing of this image. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay. So, you know, it's a, it's a interesting landscape. I think, personally, I think it would pop more as a black and white. We could make those clouds just really pop out of that. Uh, again, using Silver FX Pro. That's the only thing, or you know, or you just want to get in there with your editing and bring out those clouds. There are just, you know, there's a little bit more that you can do there with that in your editing, and that I think that would help strengthen the image. It, you know, it has a the lines leading through it. You've got leading lines. Yeah, you've got this U-shape composition, which is one of the composition tools that I wrote about in. Uh, my composition book, which draws your eye in. The only other thing I would love to see, if you could, I mean, you'd have to wait around. If a bird were flying into the frame, you know, again, that's that life form that I mentioned. I think it would add a punctuation point. And there's that contrasting element between, you know, just looking at rocks or trees or whatever and bringing a life form into it, I think, adds a lot of interest. But try that out. You know, see what it looks like as a black and white. You can download Silver Effects Pro free. You can try it out. What you do is there's there's I think about 48 different um, templates, and you can just check. I just I have like six or eight that I use over and over again. But if you go through them, you'll see one of those will really make that those clouds pop beyond amazing i mean it, it should really uh enhance the image so give that a shot and see what happens okay all right our next one is from chris who just joined a little bit ago as well uh and this one doesn't have any caption with it so uh, if you want to add anything chris feel free to in the chat so chris is a new member of the ayp club yep okay. chris uh da well, da danka Welcome, so. Chris. Yeah, so here we have interesting, you know, uh, S-curves in the composition of the road, uh, yeah, with a car. Now there's a car. So there's, there's a little punctuation point. That's what I'm talking about. Now take that car out of the image, and it really loses something, because there's a point where my eye just goes right to the car. And then I travel around, and I get to see you know the the mountains the clouds very dramatic clouds but but it's that car that actually pulls it together so good on you you know and sometimes you you get into a spot you have to wait and wait and wait maybe i don't know what that road is like maybe hardly anybody travels on it it looks like maybe it is but sometimes you just have to wait it out until you find the right punctuation point Bob Holmes talks about that. I mean, that's basically who I learned from as far as punctuation. Is It's that little point that adds interest. You know, in food, it's like that little bit of spice. You can add chili pepper, for instance, to chocolate, you know, and it just enhances the flavor. But you don't put a lot in there. You don't bombard the person and burn their mouth. You just put a little hint of that, and it can make a big difference. I use that on all sorts of food, by the way. I use it on salad and omelets, whatever. I'm just a big fan of chili. But um, that's basically what you're doing with a punctuation point. So good. Um, uh, well, yeah, JP is yeah, asking, I've, can you submit with that? I, I, give, I give my email address. Okay. Times. For those people so if, if you are the best thing for you to email do there. I'll tell so you what Facebook the, is the easiest way to get it but you can email me and if I see it I will bring it up a better way is to join AYP plus 
It is mm-hmm. not on Facebook. It's not on Instagram. It's our own closed community. And, you know, what's good about it is we're not there to just give likes. We do give feedback. And you get a chance to hear from the other members and work with them because it's an international community. All right. So, oh, and Chris uh, just added some additional information. Okay, so let's put that on the screen here, Chris, so we everybody can see what you're saying here. I lived in Kansas City and happened to capture a red SUV in the switchbacks from the top of Berthold Pass in Colorado. About a year later, I moved to Colorado and bought myself a four one. Okay, cool. So you, yeah, you waited, Chris, for that. Uh, punctuation point so good on you all right who's next all right our next one is from our good friend Glenn Glenn. and this was one he said that he was recently looking through all of his old photos and he found one that he hadn't uh, shared anywhere Uh, and so he said I enjoy the bit of old-school elegance that tends to be missing in real time in recent times I know some may find uh, this image a bit revealing in certain areas. However, as a whole, there is more mystery than skin here. Mm-hmm, true. By the way, I want to um, give a shout out to Glenn. He just finished designing an ebook for Bob Holmes that we'll be getting out to you guys soon. But I want to thank you, Glenn, for doing that. It's the same Glenn, right? We're talking about the same Glenn here. Yep, yep, it's okay. that same Glenn. I want to make sure. So, Glenn, thanks for <laughs> thanks for working on it. It was a work of uh, yeah. There you go. Uh, took a while, you know. Listen, designing books is interesting because you kind of put it together, and then not, you don't really get the flavor of it until you see it, and then oftentimes you want to switch things around. And so, thank you for being patient. That is part of the design process, and we really appreciate it. Um, Yes, Glenn, it's a very old school look, and it's an intriguing, you know, lots of dark areas which add mystery. This is a different uh, type of work than I've seen from you, because we've seen a lot of the aerial shots, which are really cool. Mm -hmm. But even says, this proves I can shoot fashion. (laughs) Yeah, definitely, definitely different. So good on getting into a different genre and testing it out. So... I, I, you know, I, I do like the old uh, retro look here. The, you know, lots of dark areas kind of adding that intrigue. So good on, on uh, going into that, going into that genre. All right. And speaking of aerial shots, we've got an interesting one here from ed bar oh, wow. <laughs> a little different kind of aerial shot this was taken in buffalo new york yeah so it came framed as i wonder if it's a photograph of that actually being printed on a, as a print on the wall um yeah so you know it's an interesting part of a story that's i consider this a story photograph like i mentioned earlier in the show here um you know, it could be part of what's going on with this aerial show. One image out of it. Um, you know, I'd like to see what else is going on. And perhaps, you know, there's others that, that show the plane against uh, not just the sky, but a mountain. But it, depending on where it is, or maybe you no know, mountains. But anyway, I do see that as a, you know, an interesting image as a part of a series. So thank you. There's blue and the blue and the, you know, the white obviously make it pop out. I think the plane, I I feel like there could be a frame that would add a little more interest. It's getting a little lost. I don't quite, I mean, I get what it is, but I don't quite, I don't quite see the plane itself. Um, So I don't know. I would just explore your other images. You might have one where... Like it was turned a little bit, and we're we're kind of getting a, a, a more of a view of it, or it was going up, a, you know, climbing up. I would just really explore your other images and see if there's one that makes that the actual plane itself pop out a little bit more. Okay. All right. Um, 
I apologize for not getting the name in advance. I was going to try and do that before we got to it, but uh, Akash, uh, this is the photo that they just submitted. Okay. So interesting, you know, taken through uh, the child's. Yeah, there's a guy standing here, a person standing here, it looks like, with an umbrella, maybe. I don't know what that is, but we're taking a look through there, and then there's this um, toy. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting frame, multiple frames, you know, which always, if it works, can be very interesting. So we've got the frame of the child, and then we've got the frame of the toy. Um, I'm just holding my hand up to see one of the ways that you can tell if something adds to a story or doesn't is just visually crop it out. I'm just doing that right now, and it does. If I just leave the child in, it sort of doesn't really have a full impact. But you, you've gotten down low, and I applaud the fact that you're using a low angle because... Too many of us just shoot from eye level over and over and over again and forget that you can shoot from any level. And a low angle in this case really helps because of the child. So we're not looking down into the child. And we're also, the only way you can look through the person's legs is to do that. So, you know, black and white, a lot of, lot of um, negative space, a lot of dark areas that kind of add to the intrigue of it. I see this also as part of another, you know, story, a longer story. And just to mention that again, you know, it's just really an important thing to develop your skills as a photographer is to create projects. By that we mean series of photographs about a certain subject. It could be about people, like we could be following this child through the different environments that the child is in or a location. We could be in a certain location and seeing, you know, here's this child and here's another person or whatever. There's a commonality. There's a common thread. And telling stories and, you know, it's a discipline that will actually elevate your photography to a new level. So that's why we're doing that on the AYP Plus class. Okay. All right. So, hi, Yvette. Um... Now, and I just want to say, welcome to all the people that have been joining. We've had a lot of people who have been joining uh, in from this live stream in the AYP Club and submitting Great. your welcome images. You it's I'm always a... fun to see new people joining in. So this, here's this is another... Cam kombucha, not, I'm not having a, <laughs> a hit of whiskey here. Uh, this is another uh, new one uh, or from a newer member, uh, Ryan. Yeah, okay, good, Ryan. So you've got a lot of line, diagonal lines going through the, you know, the meadow. And then what are we looking at behind this bighorn sheep? I think that's a tree. That I see, but what what what's actually right behind Oh, I... I think that's ocean. That's water. This is a cliff by the ocean, I, I think. I see. Okay, very interesting. Or a lake, could be a lake. Yeah, it could be contrasting elements. Um and the, you got the sheep to look at you, and we're, you know, we're getting, we're getting that, like, you know, this is a life form, and we were talking about that. Um, yeah, I would move around a little bit. There's something I'm just, I'd like to see. I'm just trying to figure out what that is right now. But... Um, what what you did was good. I mean, you got you got this di this whole th image is is a series of diagonal lines which adds vitality and interest and motion. Um, this is another example of I'd like to see multiple frames. Maybe you know maybe if you moved over to the right or left, you're probably trying not to scare it off and have it run away from you. But I would I'd move around a little bit. Um, just I feel like maybe over to the left could be interesting or a little bit over to the right. I, you know, it's 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 always hard to say, you know, because I'm not there shooting. And I know the challenges could be like maybe you couldn't move anywhere. Um, you know, you can always take your camera 
if, if, even if you were stuck in that one spot and you couldn't physically move your feet, you can take your camera way out to one side or the other, you know, or way up. Just remember to explore those different angles and, you know, maybe raising your hand really high and having a, a look down at that sheep could be interesting. A far shot over to the right or the left. Um, just try those things out. You know, obviously you're not going to find that sheep exactly again, but just remember that when you do find a subject like this, when you find any subject for that matter, just just do multiple frames with different angles as a learning exercise of nothing else and just see what happens when you shoot it from these different angles and see which one really plays out the best for you. Okay, good. Who's next? All right, our next one is from Vinal. And with this one, I took this shot before sunrise to capture the lonely crescent moon. Oh, yeah. This is not post-processed and was shot on a point-and-shoot fixed lens camera. Wow. Okay. Bonus points. Before we move on, would you guys hit your like button? That just helps people find the fact that we're here on this show. So if you don't mind doing that, that would be really helpful. And we get to see, from my software, I get to see all the like buttons floating up, which is kind of fun. Okay, sh you shot it with a point and shoot. There's the crescent moon. That explains why, uh, you know, I would say if you're really trying to get that moon to pop in the image, you're going to want to use a longer focal length. Um, Ansel Adams did that with his famous photograph, Moon Over Half Dome, Moonrise Over Half Dome. There we go. And he explained to us in a book where he talked about making these photographs that he started off, I think, with an 80 millimeter lens, which for that camera, Hasselblad, was a normal lens. So that would be comparable to a 50 millimeter lens with a 35 millimeter. But then he didn't have the moon jumping out the way he wanted so he he basically doubled the focal length i think he went to 160 and that's where you see the moon really popping out but you're dealing with a point and shoot you probably don't have any lenses so you know we've got a little tiny sliver it is what it is but uh, you know you've done a great job as far as just getting out look this is the other thing in addition to if I can impress upon you guys one thing, shoot in a variety of different settings, light angles, really just explore, you know, off things that would be considered sort of difficult lighting conditions like this. This is very difficult. I mean, there's not a lot of light here. So you had a long exposure. You probably had to put it on a tripod or steady it somehow. But I applaud that and I want to and encourage you guys angles lighting conditions obviously compositional tools it can it can teach you a lot and while you're doing it you may find a photograph that just really changes the way you look at things and that's really important okay good all, all right, right. and we still have more from new people who are joining good on uh, you guys AYP club so this one is from Ivan, and he says that what he's working on is his storytelling uh -huh. and also trying to help his clients understand, uh, you, I think, the benefits of black and white. I think that's what you were going for, Ivan. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that. And so he was wondering if he had any uh, advice on that. Ivan, I really like it. Um I oh, like... and uh, he says that he's from Santo Domingo. Okay. So I'm guessing that's where these were taken. You know, I like the angle. I uh, you, you chose an angle, which is intriguing. You've got angles in her legs. You've got a lot of angles, a lot of uh, geometry going on here. She's smoking a cigar. And... <laughs> And then we got these guys blurred off in the background. I know. I think you've got a. I think you've got a winning photograph there. I think that you know works well. And I like the fact that you're telling stories um, with your images. And that story could be about the woman. It could be about the place, as I said. Um, but 
you've explored the angles, you've done the things I've been talking about, so good on you. And I'm going to, listen, this is an advertisement, but I want you guys to be in our AYP Plus community. Here's the deal. It costs $6.50 per class if you take advantage of our special that we're running this week. What could you do for $6.50 per week? Now, that gives you the live class and also the access to our pretty vast library. What can you do? In the United States, you could get one Starbucks and a cookie maybe. No, I don't even know if you get the cookie fitted in there for $6.50. So tell me what's more valuable to you. A class that you can be part of a community, you can get critiquing, and also you can go to our library or a cup of coffee. You be the judge. So I'd love to see more of you guys joining us there. Um, I, I, you know, I'd love to keep the conversation going on these images and see you come back next week with, you know, the next part of the story. All right. So good on you. Keep this story going. All right. We have another first-time poster, new member of the community, uh, Sank uh, Sankrit Deep. Okay. I hope that's how you say that. I love the shadow. You know, it's it, yeah, that's working really well. And the you know, it's obviously a COVID image. The pattern of trees coming through and hitting the you know the you've got a pat you've got multiple patterns, which is very interesting. And um, you know, you've got these people actually framed well between the trees. So you had to wait for that moment. The other thing is you've got her feet, her foot up in the air. And that adds to the feeling of motion. We can also see it in the shadow. So you've, your timing is good. You've actually hit a bunch of points that all came together. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it just works well. It definitely works well as a black and white. I think if it were in color, there would be too many different things that kind of pull your eye around. But in this case, as a black and white, it simplifies it which is one of the things I love about black and white. It just simplified things. And it's a it's kind of a timeless art form. And it just, my eye goes right to the subject, the subjects, but mainly her. Good on you. And uh, so you keep it going. All right. Oh, let me add a new person. Uh, here's one from... Bear Marish. and Drea. Okay, my son is named Bear. I haven't, I haven't run into a lot of bears. There's a Bear Silver. So thank you for joining us. Okay, Bear and, and Drea. And uh, just joined the AYP club, I believe, too. So. Good. If you got an image, let's take a look at it. I always love to see that name. We named him, actually, we named him Eric, and we called him Air Bear. And by the time he <laughs> was... <laughs> By the time he was one, the air just dropped out and he became bear, and now he's legally bear silver. He wasn't, we didn't put that on his birth certificate, but now he is bear silver. And, okay, interesting. Now, who's this? Uh, this is Manish's post, and I don't have any uh, caption recorded with it, but okay. it's a great image. Yeah, so, you know, here's this guy, and, um, He's got it. He's got you know this, this expression. I see this as part of a series. To me, this is you know what's going on here. Where's the story? What are we looking at? Maybe there's a lot of images leading up to it. It could be about this guy, or it could be about this location. Uh, I would think it's about the guy. And you know why is he looking that way? You know those those other images kind of help fill in those things. And um, but yeah, it works. It works well as its own image. But I do feel like it's also would be part of a story, and I'm really big on that. If you haven't already heard me say that, I'm I'm really a proponent of telling stories and adding images together week after week. This is what we did in art school. We had to tell stories, and the thing is, sometimes you don't feel like going out and photographing. Well, too bad. you got to do it anyway. Sometimes you feel like the light is no good. Well, too bad. Just go out and do it anyway. 
And what that does is it causes you to move out of your comfort zone and to start photographing and maybe lighting conditions that you wouldn't consider optimum or angles that aren't optimum. But you can switch it around and sometimes you just surprise yourself. Okay, we'll look at a few more and then we got a sign off. So yep. here we go. All right. Uh, this one is from Eddie. And uh, with this one, uh, this was taken with the Nikon D7 uh, 7200 uh -huh. um, at ISO 100. It's a composite of about five images stacked expo exposure blend. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's where you're getting. I didn't know if you used an ND filter, but now you've told us. Okay, interesting um, landscape. Uh, obviously, that softness to the water adds a lot to it. If we took that away, it would be less intriguing. And there's a lot of different ways you can achieve that effect. You could put it on a tripod and just take a long exposure, you know, using an ND filter if you needed to. Um, but it adds, you know, that definitely adds to the photograph because now we, we see the water in motion. Okay, good. It's a good, you know, it's a good strong landscape image. And, you know, the, the water in the foreground and then we have another frame. You know, this is another frame within frames. We have the foreground section of the water and then the background section of the, you know, the, the rest of that creek and the trees disappearing off into it. Okay, good one. All right. This one is from our friend Amir. Uh, no caption with it. Okay, a story, uh, story image. And uh, good on you for getting, getting out there. I'm assuming this is a street photo. You probably don't know the guy. And, uh, you know, he's working. Um, the only thing I'd like to see is a little more sharpness on his face. It's a little blurry, which... You know, for this kind of photograph, either go all the way and just blur him, make him in motion, or really have his face sharp. We tend to, you know, we want to look at people's faces, especially their eyes, and have it be sharp. There's only so much you can do in post. You could sharpen it a little bit. It won't, won't really make that change occur. So that's just a question of whatever your shutter speed was, you just had to bump it up a little bit. Ed Koshy talked about that last week on our show, that he wants things really tack sharp. So he really watches his sh shutter speed, you know, the kind of photographs he does. Um, so just pay attention to that. Like, look at your, one of the beautiful things that we've got in our digital world is you can go look at your metadata, see what the exposure was, you know. What did you shoot it at, a 50th of a second? 80th, whatever it was, you just need to be a little bit higher. Hold that position. Bam, you know. So that's that's my only point as far as a technical critique. Uh, Composition-wise, it's really interesting in terms of the reflection going off the window. He's coming into the frame at an angle. Um, I would probably like, as long as we're talking about exposure, I'd probably just give it a shallower depth of field, let... Let the stuff in the background blur out because it's not really that essential to the story. So this is just controlling, you know, in the book Advancing Your Photography, I talk about the five stages of photography. And the second stage is knowing your equipment in order to use it as a tool of creativity. And you've, got, you've done so many right things here. You've got a, you know, you've got a nice compositional bunch of elements here. Um, just those little tiny things can make a difference. So play around with that. And let me know how that goes. All right, Jared, I think we'll take a couple more. And Yeah, I think we've at least got time for one more. Here's another one that was just submitted by Madi, uh, who just joined us. So welcome to the AYP Club. Yeah, welcome to the AYP Club. That's great. So Madi, okay, you've got um, a lot of dark space. Oh, and we just yep. got a little bit of a caption with this one, at least on the technical detail. This was with a Fujifilm X-T3 and a 35mm uh, camera on F2. So that's the technical specs for okay. this one. Okay, cool. 
35 millimeter lens uh, f2 so there's not a lot of light here obviously um, so okay it's interesting I would say we need a little light on the subject now you can't go over that guy and hold a reflector up um, but you're you're just inches away from having more illumination on the on the actual center of your photograph that's what's kind of missing here how can you get that you know this is this is why you know you see like a Bob Holmes photograph or an Ed Koshy photograph what makes it work that's it's that little tiny element like more light on the subject's face um, bring so we need to explore that subject we need to bring out that subject and you can see the light in front and you can see the light in back how do you how do you how can you take advantage of that i'm not going to answer that question i'm going to ask it you know it's it's that's what you want to ask yourself like how this is an interesting photograph how do i get my subject lit up and i'll let you come up with your own answer Sometimes it's just a matter of you move a little bit. Um, you know, it's not going to really change the illumination because it is what it is. But sometimes it's waiting. Maybe that maybe that guy slides over. You know, all he has to do is slide over like eight inches, and you now have light on him. You know, from that section in the, in the foreground. Anyway, just be patient. Sometimes you got to wait it out. Sometimes you engage the person I don't you know if we're talking about pure street and photojournalism we're not going to do that but um, keep shooting taking advantage of of the lighting that you see and the you know the points that you can control and you can control an awful lot of stuff uh, without manipulating the frame without manipulating the image again if we were talking about documentary we're not going to do that um, but it's just a matter of of just exploring this is where your visualization comes in and sometimes you go wow if I stood over there there's gonna be a little bounce of light you know boom that'll work okay so All right. thanks bear we do have we got one from bear okay bear one so let's do that since we just got it in here uh, and this was one of two um, a pair of portraits for a family project uh -huh. uh, that he shot. So, Yeah, so, okay, you know, diagonal line, we've got a negative space around her on the, yeah, that side. Uh, I'm going to give you that same critique. I'd like to see her eyes sharper. So you just want to be uh, really just tack sharp when you're, Unless you really want to emphasize that she's in motion, and then let's see more motion. But I think it's just a, probably either a tiny bit of focus or um, the, the length of your exposure maybe just had a little camera wiggle in it. Look at your metadata and you can see which it is. You'll see. Uh, with a child, she's mo probably moving around. Maybe not. I don't know. It Camera shake, you know, with modern cameras that have stabilization, you can definitely go to a slower shutter speed in many cases. But sometimes it's just the difference between, uh, you know, a 50th of a second and a 100th of a second. It's just going to get that, that sharpness on the eyes. Very important because we connect with people. We connect with eyes, with people and animals. You know, we really want to see that absolutely tack sharp. Um, focus on the eyes but great on the you know the composition she's you know got a she's got an intriguing look on her face looking at you no doubt so just you know you can also follow up and let us know this is what I love about the AYP plus community is I ask questions like this you guys can give me your you know your feedback and we can even see it following up a week later okay Jared, I think that's it. Or well, let's do one more. What do you say? All right, sure. Uh, let me pull up one here. Oh, uh, let's do another kids one. This was from our friend Wayne. 
last time. Okay. I uh, didn't quite get a chance to get to this one in our last critique show, so okay. this should be a uh, fun one. I believe the caption with this one is, Do you like my boots, Daddy? So this <laughs> is Isabella showing off her new Peppa Pig uh, galoshes. Edited in Lightroom, shot in color, converted to black and white. I like to bring down the shadows when editing yeah. in black and white to get more contrast. Yeah, that's good. You definitely have a good dynamic range there. Uh, her eyes are sharp. Her face is sharp. There's the diagonal line uh, going up the stairs and also of her legs. These are these are strong elements in composition, you guys. You know, just noticing those lines, which you obviously did. And, uh, you know, it's a very cute image because we're looking, she's looking right at you. And we as the viewer are getting your view. It works great as a black and white. So, so good job. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us again. We're, you know, we're do, we do these critique shows every now and then. We're not doing them every single week. Um, I'm hoping to nail down a kind of a schedule with Dan Milner so we see him on a regular basis. We'll let you guys know. A few points of interest here are, first of all, please do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done that. Enable the bell because then you're not going to miss any of our shows as they come up. And uh, like the video, share it, leave your comments. You know, I really do try to answer every comment that I see. You know, sometimes it just needs a, you know, a thank you, whatever. Fine, I'll, I'll put that in there. But um, I, uh, I love seeing what you guys are writing, so we always pay attention to that. I've got a couple of guests that are in the works. I, ha I don't have them confirmed yet, so I'm not going to mention them. But um, I've got some guests coming up that I think could be really interesting this summer. Okay, so Jared... Just give them one more thing about what we're doing as far as our sale. Let them know. Yeah, and I just put it in, uh, so you should already see it. So we've got our 4th of July sale. Um, I can... Do you have my screen up if you want to bring... Uh, bring it up there. There's your um, I'll just show the store off quick. Yep. So we've got our three courses, Advancing Your Photography, Secrets to Amazing Photo Composition from the Masters, and Secret to Amazing Photos from Bob Holmes. This one's really cool. Yeah. You follow Bob on assignment for two days as he's taking shots at a vineyard, and you can get each of these for ninety-seven dollars. Yeah, uh, which is you know really good deal. And then also for our AYP plus memberships, which we've been talking about, you can get the quarterly. You can get your first quarterly for eighty-four dollars. So that's twenty percent off what it would be if you were paying month to month yeah um, and you get the live classes you get access to all of the previous classes and you get access to the community um, and you know like the classes are like this except for we get to see you and you get to talk to us yeah we open know? the microphone so that we we've been really enjoying it um, and we've been working on the projects so highly recommend that you check that out it's been a really great experience Scroll back up there. I want to just talk about my course, too. We spent the better part of the beginning oh, of yeah. this year creating this course. This is this is a brand new edition that came out in, uh, I don't know, March. I think we, we launched it. And it's based on my book, Advancing Your Photography. It follows the book exactly. It took us months to create this course. And it's the result of years of work with my interviews on um, advancing your photography and my own work. I really feel like I put my heart and soul into this course. 97 bucks isn't a lot to ask you guys. Really, you're going to have a complete course in photography. And if you couple that with these other courses, especially Bob's course, you're going to have a lot to learn from over the summer. And I would highly recommend that you guys take advantage of that. Okay, well, that's all the news we've got for today. And uh, for Americans, we're going to have a great 4th of July weekend. For those of you who aren't from here, celebrate your weekend anyway. You know, have go out and get a lot of photographs. That's the best way to celebrate. And, uh, you know, listen, that's what it's all about. I ap applaud the guys, people who've shown up here. Uh, and especially when you're 
when you're testing things out, when you're using different angles, do different conditions, whatnot, you know, it's great. I want to see you guys doing that. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is remember, and you can say it with me, remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Okay, you guys, see you soon. Take care.